Hi guys and girls of the Cloud Tech community, I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard and here are a few tech news highlights from this week in the world of cloud computing and IoT. I'd like to thank you all for all your kind tweets, comments and feedback from last week's news and please remember to like, subscribe, comment and share this video with your friends and your colleagues. A team backed by Mark Cuban unveiled a project called the Mercury Protocol on Thursday aimed at reinventing how we interact online. The Mercury Protocol is a new type of software designed for messaging apps. It's built as a blockchain which creates secure transaction records across multiple computers. The team hopes that the popular messaging service like WhatsApp, Signal and Facebook Messenger will eventually adopt the software. But for now the focus is on the two of Cuban's pet apps called Dust and Broadcast. Under the Mercury Protocol, which is built on top of the Eurythian blockchain, users will be able to earn tokens by reading a certain number of articles. According to Ryan Ozonian, the CEO of Dust and leader of the Mercury Protocol, he said the only way for people to earn tokens at the outset will be through participation. In the future though, he said there will also be an opportunity to purchase them. Google got a much needed win this week when Marketo, the marketing automation platform, chose the Google Cloud platform to migrate its entire on-prem operation. Marketo announced this week that it will move all of its marketing automation software onto the Google Cloud platform. This is part of a six-year alliance with Google that will include the integration of Google tools into Marketo's products. In addition, Marketo plans to use Google BigQuery for advanced analytics and Google's machine learning APIs with the goal of providing better marketing insights for its customers. Marketo plans to be fully migrated off its own servers and onto Google's cloud before 2019. Australian entrepreneurs are reaping the benefits from participating in the San Francisco landing pad according to Austrade this week. Some Australian startups are benefiting from securing significant deals in the lucrative US market and others are using the experience to refine their business offerings. Since launching in February 2016, the San Francisco landing pad has housed 20 startups and is midway through its fourth intake. Participants have represented a wide spectrum of target sectors, including medtech, fintech, sports tech, edtech, government tech, logistics, retail, and e-commerce. The landing pad program managed by Austrade forms part of the federal government's national innovation and science agenda, which aims to boost the global potential for Australian entrepreneurs. The Australian state of Victoria appoints the first information commissioner by poaching WA information commissioner Sven Blumel. Blumel will oversee areas that until now were the domain of separate roles. The Freedom of Information Commissioner, a role previously filled by Michael Eisen, and the Commissioner for Privacy and Data Protection that was previously filled by David Watts. The government said, this ensures the Victorian community has a single regulator to oversee Victoria's public sector privacy and data protection laws and provide independent advice to the government across those closely related fields. Blue Mail has been Western Australia's Information Commissioner since 2009. IINet has warned customers to expect slower internet speeds, increased latency and packet loss to international destinations in Asia after a number of subsea links between Australia and Hong Kong were severed due to severe weather. IINet has had to temporarily route traffic via the US and has restricted its peering. This week a survey by Now TV has found there are a surprising number of people who claim they don't think sex with a robot is cheating. The survey revealed that 40% of the participants didn't see sex with a robot as cheating. Sex robots have made the headlines this year after sex doll company Real Doll showed off a video of an intelligent sex doll talking to its owner while TV series such as Westworld also explores the idea of love dolls. Professor Noel Sharkey from Sheffield University England said, Robotics and the artificial intelligence is a long way off the technical sophistication of the theme park in Westworld, but we are already seeing dolls being used in the adult entertainment industry and we can expect robots to join them soon, so I think you're going to need a can of WD-40 but also a USB key. A list of thousands of wide open IoT devices has been leaked. 
This list of internet protocol or IP addresses for thousands of devices allowing full access had been published, sparking fears of a new denial of service botnet. Security researcher Ray Watson tweeted the discovery of the list. It initially appeared to lead to some 33,000 devices running the clear text Telnet remote access service, allowing logins with default credentials such as admin, admin or no authentication. Another security researcher, Victor Givers of the GDI Foundation, after further analysis, Gevers found that 1,775 of the IP addresses on the list responded to the Telnet connections. Most of the devices were from China and other Asia countries. The list has since been removed, but not before it was viewed more than 20,000 times. Great story from the world of artificial intelligence as musician Taryn Southern composes her entire album using AI. Taryn Southern's new single, Break Free, which is a big moody ballad composed by artificial intelligence. This type of musical composition is not a fluke or a novelty for Southern. She is using artificial intelligence platforms to create an entire album called I Am AI. It's the first LP to be entirely composed and produced with AI on the open source platform called Amper Music, which helps to create the musical stems. For each track, she plugs in the genre, the instruments she wants to use, and beats per minute. In return, Amper churns out disjointed verses that can be rearranged into a song and layered beneath Southern's vocals. Below is a link to the track. Check it out. Here's some news extra. Australia now has 9 million Instagram users. That's around 40% of the population. And now Instagram has more than 700 million users globally. The next time you see a politician in your Facebook feed, enjoy it, because you've probably paid for it. Taxpayers are picking up the tab for politicians using social media, with Labour Senator Sam Bastiari, best known for his halal videos, billing taxpayers $20,000 for four Facebook videos ahead of the 2016 federal election, while a Liberal MP spent $25,000 on his website. I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard, and thanks for watching this week's Cloud Computing and IoT News Highlights. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share this video with your friends and your colleagues. Until next week, be good, be safe, and keep our clouds secure.